Hey everyone. Hi everyone. Welcome to the very first episode of the California Student Aid Commission's Financial Paid Podcast Series. My name is Judith Gutierrez. And I'm Michael Lemus. And you're listening to Financial Paid. We know at the California Student Aid Commission, or CSAC for short, that it shouldn't cost you an arm and a leg to pursue a higher education or post-secondary education in the state of California. So grab a cup of coffee, grab your favorite beverage, take a seat, and I hope you enjoy the series as much as we are enjoying making it. And I'm actually really excited for this. How are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. It's been a long time coming. I know we've been talking about launching a podcast for what seems like years, and yes. so I'm definitely excited to be here. No, definitely. Well, maybe, you know, I mentioned the California Student Aid Commission, and we'll refer to it as CSAC for short. Yes. We might flip-flop around the episode, because I know I tend to do that. I'll speak for myself. But maybe we can, you know, for our listeners and viewers, talk a little, a little bit about what is the California Student Aid Commission? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. And since our audience tends to be high school students and parents, I can tell yes. you that when I was a high school student, I had no idea what the heck CSAC was. As a matter of fact, when I got to college, I didn't know what CSAC was. And so mm -hmm. the fact that I didn't know and I now get to work for the commission is actually a really cool opportunity here to talk to our guests and tell them about it. So the commission, we like to call it CSAC because we like to use a lot of acronyms here. Yes. <laughs> so it's also way easier to say. So CSAC actually started off in 1955, so way mm -hmm. back when, many decades ago. And basically, from the beginning, it's always been in charge of actually giving out financial aid to students. And mm -hmm. so over the time, it developed into the California Student Aid Commission. And as it states in the title, there is a commission, which means that there's a group of people mm -hmm. A lot of them are actually appointed by the governor that make up this organization. So there's about 15 commissioners, there's an executive director, and a whole bunch of staff like ourselves that actually put in the day-to-day -day work to make sure that we're getting out that financial aid to students and their families. Definitely. And I mean, for the students and families listening to us, it comes down to, you know, we don't want to bore you with all the yes. <laughs> nitty-gritty details of what the agency is made up of, what the commission is made up of, but we do constantly hear the question, to your point, Michael, yeah. is, you know, students applying for college or vocational school or receiving any sort of financial aid for a post-secondary education, mm -hmm. when they log into their colleges or universities portal, yeah. they'll notice maybe some sort of aid that came in, mm -hmm. um, they'll notice kind of just like their schedules and all that fun stuff. I'm probably dating myself because it's been a while since I've logged into my college portal. But, you know, there's always been that question of, well, where is this money coming from? Mm -hmm. You know, who yes. is CSAG? Is this just coming from the state? Which it is in part, but yes. no one's really familiar with who is behind the scenes and putting in the work to ensure that this money is making its way to students and families. Absolutely, yeah, and I think to your point, we definitely don't want to bore you with all the little <laughs> details. So what I will say is that it's as simple as this. So every state gets a budget, right? And so here in yes. California, we actually have a budget that allows us to have this financial aid and to actually give it out to students. So mm -hmm. every year, we're actually allotted a certain amount of money that we actually get to give out to the students themselves. And so to your point, I also don't want to date myself because it's been a long time since I've been in college, but it is important that people actually know what this actually looks like, right? Because when you actually apply for financial aid, when you get that award letter, all that stuff is really confusing at times for people mm -hmm. to understand. I know that when I went through it, I was really, really lost throughout the whole process. And that's why it's so important for us to be talking about this. So when it comes to CSAC, as far as just understanding from a very high level how it all works, the state gives us money, we get to give it to the students and their families so they can actually access but also afford their post-secondary education. So like you said, it could be a college, university, or a vocational school too. Yeah, and Michael, do we have to pay these grants back, this money that we're offering mm -hmm. students? Great question, no. So if you ever hear a grant or scholarship, you don't actually have to pay that money back. And I would also say, be careful if anyone's asking you like, hey, yes. mm -hmm. do you wanna apply for financial aid? You just gotta pay this fee. No, it's absolutely yeah. free. So that's really, really important to discuss because unfortunately there are scammers out there, right? And we wanna help people avoid those, those folks um, and make sure that they access financial aid. So grants, scholarships, all of that is completely free. Exactly, and we are the largest state agency in the nation that distributes these yeah. financial aid awards or what we call grants, specifically to us, the Cal yeah. Grant, the California Grant, to students. Um, and to your point, yeah, there are these free applications. Mm -hmm. The students and families should not have to pay to receive financial aid in order to pursue that higher education yes, or that degree absolutely. or certification. And so those two applications that we, or 
you know, the applications that we talk about and, and encourage students and families to apply to are the FAFSA application, yes. which yes. is most heard of. Mm -hmm. It's the free application for federal student yep. aid. Um, and that one is specific to the students who are permanent residents yes. or U.S. citizens. They yeah. receive federal aid if eligible, um, as well as any state aid, mm -hmm. institutional aid. And the second application for students to see their, if they're eligible for yes. financial aid would be the California Dream Act application. Yes. And so those two big applications and the California Dream Act application, we do refer to it as CADA. Yes, another acronym. Another <laughs> acronym. <laughs> uh, but you, you might hear us say CADA throughout yes. the series. And the CADA application, which isn't really talked about mm -hmm. as often it's as we'd like, very yeah. unfortunate, it is the application that California provides for yeah. our undocumented students yep. here in California, regardless of DACA status. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's so many amazing resources available. We try to make sure that students and families are not only accessing education or post-secondary yeah. education, but are affording it yes. as they go. You mentioned it there. So there's a difference between just having access to education mm -hmm. and actually affording it, especially in a state like California where we know housing's expensive, food is expensive. There's yeah. so many things that actually contribute to whether or not a student can actually afford education. And it's really important that we talk about also how much money we actually get. Like in California, the California mm -hmm. Student Aid Commission is actually awarded or given about $4 billion to actually manage. And so we have lots of programs Cal Grant program, the Middle Class Scholarship, we have the Chafee Grant for Foster Youth. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of money and yeah. we're, <laughs> we're trying fortunate. to give it away. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to give it away. And you know, Just take it. <laughs> a lot of people actually don't use some of that money. The no, money goes unused. It's left on the table. Yes. And that is something that we're trying to avoid, especially in a year like this where we're still living through the pandemic. We want to get yeah. people to access that aid and we want people to know that CSAC being the Student Aid Commission, that we're here to help and that we can actually help them access that aid and afford their education. So to the students and families listening and viewing, and they're probably mm -hmm. thinking, well, why are we your hosts? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what are Good we question. doing here? Um, well, you and I are actually part of the new program outreach and marketing team yes, over yeah. at the Student Aid Commission, and you are actually our fearless leader. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> as our manager. Um, and you know, part of the outreach efforts that we've been expanding on, and, you know, we, I feel like we give the pandemic too much credit sometimes mm. in that it forced us into this virtual environment. That's a great point, yeah. And as a state agency that's been here for decades, mm -hmm. it forces us to really reevaluate where we've been on communications yes. and how we are now reaching younger audiences yes. and stakeholders, policy advocates, all, all our amazing partners yeah. um, and communities we work with. And so part of these outreach efforts uh, through our team, which is mm -hmm. probably why we're both here, yes. obviously, <laughs> is to now create this podcast series where we are able to expand on the social media work we've done, expand on the physical yes. communications like postcards and things we send mm -hmm, out to mm -hmm. California students and just have, uh, you know, something people can tune into and refer back to yes. for any information regarding uh, programs, applications, events even. Yeah. You know, we have our statewide cash for college workshops. And I think that's really, you know, kind of the, the goal here, if yes. I'm not mistaken, is, is to, to sure. just continue to have these multiple platforms, whatever works for anyone as long as they're getting the information. Yeah, and to your point, I think that because we're trying to expand around our outreach efforts, our marketing efforts, Social media is a really big part of this conversation. Podcasting, which we've been asked for years, hey, when's CSAC gonna have this podcast? Before yeah. the pandemic, it's before happening. any of that, yeah. <laughs> and it's exciting, right? Because mm -hmm. we finally get to say like, we have this podcast, we've expanded our, our outreach, our marketing. And the whole intention behind that, besides having really pretty graphics and all these things, is that we're reaching different types of people, that we're reaching more people across the state. Yeah. And you're right, our population, a lot of them, not all, but a lot of them do tend to be younger high school students. So thinking about things like, okay, are we gonna develop a TikTok video? Are we yeah. gonna be expanding on our Instagram? The point is that we need to reach them where they're at. And there's also people that don't necessarily utilize social media as much. So they may be listening to a podcast, they may mm -hmm. be getting print material, like you said, a postcard. The point is that we have a lot of different options and that we get the information out. So when it comes to what we do here at CSAC, I think for us, it's just making sure that people are informed. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of information and to that point where we talked about misinformation earlier, right? There's a lot of things going out there. We wanna try to simplify it. 
mm -hmm. and not just simplify it, but also have different ways of accessing it. So if you want to listen yeah. to a podcast, if you want to join us on Instagram, whatever that may be, there's going to be an option for you. And that's what's really, really important is that you can access us in a variety of different ways. Exactly. And we don't want to put any cookie cutter material out there, yes, essentially, sure. yeah, and hope that not. it resonates with all our audiences mm -hmm. in the same way. So we're always making sure to tailor that information. And the biggest goal and priority, I would say, is just meeting our audience and stakeholders essentially halfway. Yes. Meet them where they are yeah, instead of hoping they come to you because sometimes they don't know what they don't know. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I think that's been the biggest challenge for me yeah. <laughs> in this role Same. is learning that, is realizing yeah. that sometimes even we don't know what we don't know in terms of what questions are being asked yes. um, and how people doing the work on the ground are working with these students. So it's always, you know, we welcome that two-way street yep. flow and conversation where we get an idea of what questions are being asked yes. by students and families and how we're providing the right information. But I know you have a full plate <laughs> as the lead and manager of the outreach and marketing mm -hmm. team, which is a new unit. It is, yeah, about that, a year old. Yeah. About a year old at CSAC. And, you know, kind of just want to give our, our viewers and listeners an yeah. idea of what that role is like. Yes. What was the work? Yeah, well, it is new. As you said, you're a part of our wonderful team as our <laughs> outreach and marketing coordinator. Um, we essentially got established because we needed to expand. This happened during the pandemic. It was yes. probably a couple of months in and there was an obvious question of like, what else can we be doing to go ahead and reach more students? Because we started to see the decline of financial aid applications during the pandemic. And, and misinformation. And, yes, and misinformation. Mm -hmm. A lot of myths out there, a lot of just wrong information being yeah. posted. And so we knew, okay, we have to act on this. And so, yes, this program outreach and marketing unit was developed. We have wonderful people that really help to manage our outreach programs, including Casper College and Cal Soap. And of course, our marketing efforts, so social media, our communications, and press releases, and all of those things. But I think the bigger part of this conversation also is as we expand how we also work across the commission. And so mm -hmm. the commission is the state agency, and so we have over 100 employees that put in such hard work every single day, whether yeah. they're on the phones, answering emails, they're developing material, they're updating things for the grants. There's so much work that goes on behind the scenes that a lot of people just don't know about. And our team is a small part of that, but yeah. we definitely have an impact because we're the front-facing people that need to get this information out to the students and their families. Definitely. And I feel like with these roles come their challenges. Oh, yeah. But I think what is really helpful is that everyone in the agency and everyone we work with really cares about these yes. communities. They care about the work they do. Um, and I think that that just goes a long way. Yeah. Further than just even providing the support. It really does. And so within the team, um, I have the privilege and pleasure of working as the Outreach and Marketing mm -hmm. Coordinator, which is derived from, from the title of the Outreach and Marketing um, Leadership and yes. the team. Um, and so I was a little bit, not skeptical, but I was mm -hmm. a little nervous coming yeah. into the role. I thought, okay, this is a new team. This is a new role I'm serving. Um, and I just thought, you know, let's... Let's take these lemons and make lemonade. Yes. We had the <laughs> pandemic uh, happening, and I remember we were in the middle of a rebrand. We now have they a new were. logo, yes. this beautiful logo behind us, if you're watching. Um, we have a whole new style guide. We gave our website a facelift. Yep. We, we were able to just find ways to make sure that this information is not only easily digestible, yeah. but that the sources where they're housed are easy to navigate. Yeah and easy to share, especially for a lot of our high school counselors Absolutely. and administrators working yep. with students and families. And so a lot of what the role is, as you know, Michael, um, as the coordinator, it comes down to helping our multiple programs we oversee. Yes. It is, <laughs> <laughs> you said it. <laughs> it is uh, supporting our Cash for College mm -hmm. coordinator and team and hosting uh, statewide and local Cash for College workshops, so which are the workshops that focus on supporting students applying yep. for financial aid and provide that one-on-one -on -one support. And, you know, we're playing around with this new idea of statewide workshops yeah. because we're able to reach bigger audiences in a virtual platform when these workshops used to be local, yes, in person, at the schools. At yeah. the schools. Yep. So we've been working on that um, and also just overseeing a lot of our marketing campaigns. And, yeah. you know, I feel like we throw the word marketing loosely, or maybe I do. <laughs> I do that a lot. Um, 
but it definitely comes down to a lot of communications. It's a lot, it's yeah, for sure. It's communications heavy, and I think the marketing piece is really the fact that we've been playing around a lot with commercials, this podcast, social media advertisements. Uh, we're now expanding from being on the traditional platforms like Facebook yep. and Instagram to now having a Twitch account yes. and TikTok uh, with no dances ready to go <laughs> whatsoever, but it. we are getting there. <laughs> And so, yeah, so I feel like, you know, this this team and these roles have sort of grown and developed into, to your point, yes. a big part of the agency Absolutely. and helping get the information out. Because really, at the end of the day, it comes down to just, you know, making sure that the work our amazing colleagues and teams put into supporting these communities day in and day out is getting to the right communities. Absolutely. It's yeah. it's informing stakeholders. And so I think that's been the most rewarding part of this experience. Yeah. I completely agree and I think I, and I know that I this speaks true for both of us, but I think for a lot of people across the commission that are employees, they actually got financial aid when they were going through school. And I think mm -hmm. that makes it that much more special because it's not just a job. It's something that you have some sort of connection to, you're attached to the mission of the organization. Yeah. There's something that really speaks volumes, right? That you're able to give back to a space that gave to you. And I'm a former Cal Grant recipient. I applied through the FAFSA. Yeah. Like I went through school and was able to afford school because of financial aid. And I think that's something that we share that, you know, makes it that much more special when it comes to the work that we actually do day in and day out. It's mm -hmm. beyond just like, okay, we're making flyers or we're putting out a podcast. It's like, hey, we actually got financial aid too. And now the cool thing about our jobs is that we get to go ahead and help other people also mm -hmm. access that. So it's a, it's a cool thing to just be able to be connected to that. Yeah, and it really helps. Like even having that experience and that background just yeah. helps to even understand the audiences you're working totally. with. Yes. You know, you mentioned it's true. We... I also received the Cal yeah. Grant. I relied on financial aid yeah. to make, you know, my college experience a reality because I know my parents could not afford Same. that. Same. Um, and so that has really influenced a lot of the work we do is that as, a, as myself, as a Latina who yeah. grew up in Southeast LA, yep. who grew up in, in a city called Linwood. Yeah. So I want to give a shout, shout out, out to Sela <laughs> and to Linwood. Um, yeah, we we were told constantly to to our faces, even as children, that college wasn't an option for yeah. us. You know, I was even just struggling to figure out if the college I wanted to go to and was my dream school was something I even deserved. <laughs> and yeah. so figuring out what that would look like and the resources available to make that happen was a big struggle or hurdle yeah. it was a huge barrier but i was very lucky in that you know despite being first generation yep. and having parents who didn't have that same experience and wanted and encouraged um post-secondary education but didn't really know how exactly. to help That's, or how yes. to get us yes. there we had to learn a lot on our own and i always applaud and commend my older sister who mm. went to berkeley um go bears <laughs> and she she was kind of the one paving the way for me she yeah. had to learn all about financial aid herself all about college wow. admissions and you know there's a lot i learned on my own too but i was very lucky to have someone to look yeah. to for that's, that. that's huge. I mean, for me, you know, I'm, I'm the only child, so it's like, I gotta figure it out. And, oh, no. you know, no. my parents had me super young. My mom was actually 16, I think, when she had me. And so, you know, my parents, I mean, they, they were raising a child as, I mean, teenagers themselves. And mm -hmm. so by the time that I actually got to the point where I was applying for colleges, you know, they were still really young and they didn't understand the process. I mean, they didn't get to go to college or to a university or even yeah. a vocational program. They didn't get to do any of that. And so it was a lot of research on my own, a lot of Googling. I was fortunate that I actually had a college counselor that was really, really helpful. And she had, you know, office hours during lunch to help us to apply for financial aid and to up, just apply for college in general. Yeah. And to your point or that you made earlier, there's no way that I would have been able to afford a college education, you know, in my undergrad. Shout out to Cal Poly Pomona, go Broncos, because that's where <laughs> I went, and Cal State Fullerton for grad school. There's just no way. Like, I, I had a situation actually happen in my third year of college where there was an issue with one of the grants because our income had changed. And I was fortunate to be able to work out that issue with the financial aid office because. At one point, it was actually like, hey, am I going to lose this money? There's yeah. no way I'm going to be able to finish the quarter if I actually lose this grant. And being able to work that out with the staff 
I think it's really important because we do have a lot of people that are there to help, mm -hmm. but a lot of people like myself when I was going through school, I didn't know where to go. Like, what office do I go to? I didn't know what CSAC was. Yeah. All of those things, I think still in this day and age, many, many years later, dating myself again, but many years <laughs> later, still play the same role where a lot of people are confused. Mm -hmm. But I think because of what we're doing, like the podcast, the social media, we're gonna be able to reach a lot more people than we ever have before. Definitely, you know, than we have when I was going through school. And so I think yeah. that that makes things exciting because now we have that opportunity to just continue pushing forward. Yeah, and I'm, I'm hoping, you know, platforms like this and, you know, little things we're doing help put a face to yes. the agency yes. and to where yeah. this money is coming from. Because uh, they're just awesome resources and I cannot recommend them to my yeah. younger siblings and just cousins and stuff enough. And, you know, you gave your shout out to Cal Poly Pomona. <laughs> I, I feel bad I gave a shout out to UC Berkeley over here and I'm not even an alum. But <laughs> UC Santa Cruz is my alma mater. I wanted to give them a quick shout out. Go Slugs. Um, and I actually still serve on the alumni council Very at cool. UC Santa yeah. Cruz. I, I just got beat to the title of the youngest member wow. on the board by one year, but <laughs> I, I'm there. And, and I think it speaks to that idea of, you know, you and I probably share this experience too, is when I was at UC Santa Cruz, you know, I was always reminded of my hometown in Linwood and the yes. communities and just friends and colleagues that maybe wanted to pursue an education, but, you know, yeah. were trapped in that idea of, of not being able to. Yeah. And so they stayed home or they ended up just you know, maybe, maybe not making their way. And I always remember that. So I got deeply involved in, you know, student government and some of yes. the higher ed advocacy that was happening to the point of being elected the president of yes. the statewide UC Student Association. And, you know, with that role came as challenges, but we were able to just push for the accessibility and affordability mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of a quality education. And I believe yes. that's the mission of UCSA, but it was also a shared mission amongst all institutions across yeah. California. And that work has been able to bleed into the work we're doing now at yep. CSAC, um, you know, that mission, that vision, the educational equity piece of it. Yes. Um, and then also, you know, it also creates the space for us to work with these student leaders now yeah. and hear them out and hear, you know, these ever-changing student needs as well. And you mentioned briefly earlier that total cost of attendance. Yep. That's it's a big expensive. part of the work we do. Yes, mm -hmm. it's a big part of it. And, you know, you reminded me, like, I'm from L.A. too, and... Ooh, ooh. To this day, yes, yes, shout out to <laughs> LA for sure. Um, but to this day, you know, I still think about those folks that didn't get the opportunities, right? That mm -hmm. never were told that they could actually go to exactly. college or they just simply, you know, for some reason believed that it just wasn't an option for them mm -hmm. or that they didn't have access to it because of, you know, not having enough money. And sometimes just not being aware that there is financial aid. And I think that's why it's just so important that we continue to bring it back to that message that. California still has money for students. We have that budget that I talked about earlier. We actually have a lot of money here in the state to be able to give out, but people need to apply. The students need to apply, the families need to go ahead and be in the same room and help them in that process. And yeah. so with that, how do people actually apply for this? Because we've been talking about financial aid, we've talked about yeah. applications, like how do they apply? <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely. And I also wanted to just touch base on the flip side of that. We talk yeah. a lot about students who probably don't believe they can afford college and therefore don't even apply yeah. to a university, apply to vocational school, and yeah. therefore don't even apply to financial aid. But there's also the flip side of families that maybe think they make too much yes, actually. to yes, yes, yes. receive any sort of That's aid to one. go to yeah. college. And, you know, we just want to make sure that we remind Absolutely. folks that you shouldn't opt out, yes. you know, you just, try. <laughs> just go for it. Yeah. You lose nothing by applying for, to your point, the two applications, yes. the FAFSA, which is most talked about, mm -hmm. the free application for federal student aid. Yep. And then the second application that California pro offers is a California Dream Act application. Yes. So by applying, you don't lose anything. Nope. It's you, free. <laughs> it's free applications. And you really just get a better sense of what you're eligible for. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought up just the income. That's a really important point because I mentioned this earlier, but I think I want to definitely emphasize this point is that we have a lot of programs. So it's not just the Cal Grant. There's a middle class scholarship. Like, that is There's true. legit a middle class scholarship. There's a Chafee grant for foster youth. There's a lot of aid out there beyond what most people know. Mm -hmm. And all it takes is just going to our website or talking to someone like us to get that information because it's all readily available. Yeah. It's just getting to that space, right? Whether it's our social media or a website. 
So this is our first episode, and we thought it would be fun to include a myth-busting segment in each of our episodes. And so for today's myth buster, our myth of the day is... Yeah, it's a common one, and it's basically when students think that they're not going to qualify for any aid, so they just don't end up applying. And so that's a huge one that we hear probably day in and day out. Mm -hmm. And what you said earlier really speaks to this. It's just try, because you never know. You may be pleasantly surprised. I actually know people that have actually applied and got way more aid that they thought that they would ever be eligible yeah. for, and they were able to pay for all sorts of things. And so there is that, that possibility of actually getting that aid and, again, being pleasantly surprised by how much you actually get. Exactly. Like I said earlier, you don't lose anything by just applying. Go for it. As our executive director says, go get that money and leave the rest to us. I love that, but it, that is very true. Um, and, you know, I guess just as we mention all the time, the first step is applying. And that's applying for the FAFSA or the California Dream Act application. Absolutely. And when it comes to the applications, something that I really want to emphasize here is that you are only applying to one yes. over the other. So it's not both of the applications, it's the FAFSA or the CADA. It doesn't take very long to apply. You can find all the information on our website. You can contact us, and we're happy to go ahead and assist in that process. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, and we hope you'll stay tuned for the rest of the episodes. Again, I'm Judith Gutierrez. And I'm Michael Lemus. And this was Financial Paid. Thanks, everyone. Bye.